kick the little tin doggy? Maybe later. Just to get this out of the way and make it perfectly clear, I am so biased about this game that my bias has taken a physical form and started attacking people who disagree with it. I love Full Throttle. I played the demo to absolute death right up until I got the full game for my 8th birthday. You can imagine the excitement of an 8 year old boy just watching a cutscene where an awesome cool biker dude rides over a car to a heavy metal soundtrack and then you find out that that character has the same name as you. Yeah, I got emotionally attacked pretty quickly straight away, to the point where having not been able to play the full game for at least 8 years, I can still recall about 80% of the total dialogue and 100% of the puzzle solutions. What I'm trying to convey here is that I'm pretty keen on this game, but I will do my best to try and look at it from a newcomer's point of view. That said, I'm not going to talk about the actual game too much in this video, instead I'll mainly be discussing the actual remastered package. Costing only £8.79 for the week after its release, and then bumped up to £10.99, this is a pretty well priced game. For that price you get the remaster itself, in which all artwork has been redrawn and expanded to fill widescreen resolutions, and all the original audio has been touched up nicely to make it sound a bit less 1995-y. You can switch between the remastered and original unaltered version of the game at any time with the press of a button, or you can jump into the menus and adjust the visual and audio however you like. So you can have the remastered visuals with the original audio, or have the improved audio with the original visuals. Personally, I prefer the original settings for everything. While the new visuals are definitely an improvement, the vehicles have lost their style. In the old game, they were realistic looking, for the time, 3D models, which added to the gritty, grimy atmosphere of the game. The new ones though are in the same style as everything else, certainly more detailed, but it makes them seem almost too clean. But that's just me being picky and all nostalgia and rose tinted glasses. And this game allows me, and indeed anyone else who plays this game, to play it exactly how they want to. Although I do just want to point out that due to the increased size of the screen in the remastered version, the very last puzzle in the game is now no longer a puzzle. I distinctly remember 8 year old me being stuck there for a while, whereas anyone playing this for the first time with the wider view won't even register it as a puzzle. But it's not really enough to charge a tenner for a 22 year old game that can be completed in one sitting if you know what you're doing. So we also get a couple of little extras. Upon completing the game you unlock a heap of concept artwork, which is pretty cool for anyone interested in such things. You can see some of the design development for the main characters, some familiar environmental art, and some stuff from scrapped sections and characters. Whether this interests you or not depends entirely on how much this sort of thing grabs your attention, but as someone with a whole shelf full of concept art books, I appreciate this sort of access to the creation of the game. There's also a jukebox with all of the in-game audio tracks available to listen to, both in their original quality and the new remastered ones. However, you don't get the full licensed tracks, just the mixes found in the game. You also get the option of audio commentaries with the original team behind the game. These started off as pretty interesting, with them talking about things I had to remove for various reasons, or the stories behind the game ideas and mechanics, but as the game went on, I started to get a bit disappointed with these commentaries. Nearly every screen in the game has a commentary attached to it, and some of the cutscenes have them too, but somewhere after the gorge section, they completely stopped relating to what was actually happening on screen. Almost all of them are still pretty interesting, but when I was hoping for some insight on how the idea of the K-Fish gang came about, I was instead treated to a story about the producer having to phone up random bars to try and find Tim Schafer one day because of an emergency that no one could remember. Some of these commentaries trigger during the action scenes in the game, and if you pause the game, you pause the commentary. This meant that I missed the end of a commentary that had triggered during a specific fight, as it cut off halfway through because I'd beaten it. I haven't seen many commentaries in games myself, personally, but I do remember that Half-Life and Portal had boxes that you could click on to trigger that specific bit of commentary. This seems like a much better way of doing it, and it allowed them to fit more content into any relevant area, and I think that Full Throttle could have really done with this sort of system, so it could fit more content into the relevant places. With all that said, if you're a fan of the game already, then this is definitely worth a purchase, as not only is it well priced and a decent package, if you've lost your original CD, this is the only way to buy the original game. And believe me, I trawled the internet looking for somewhere to buy a digital copy online a few years ago. It's not out there. This is the only way to own this game now, legally. 
But what about newcomers? People who have heard tales of this game from their elders. How will modern audiences take to this? Well, I can't really say for sure, obviously, but I can at least attempt to take a step back from it, try to look at it from a newcomer's point of view. I'd argue that this game is a good gateway drug into point and click adventure titles. Most of the puzzles are much less contrived than other games in the genre, in that you won't have to combine random items in your inventory to create new things. Interaction with the world is limited to four options, eyes, mouth, fist or boot, and many of the puzzles are pretty straightforward and on the same screen. Is that gate in your way locked? A lockpick will do the trick. Will that door refuse to open? A swift boot will grant you access. Is that minefield too treacherous to cross? Well, I won't ruin that one, but most of the puzzles are fairly straightforward, and I imagine they wouldn't pose too much trouble for most people. There are some exceptions though, like that minefield I just mentioned. It's one of the more contrived puzzles in this game, and I can only wonder how long it would take someone completely new to the game to figure it out. I do however distinctly remember getting stuck on an action scene back in the day, during the Destruction Derby section. Playing through it again, I can imagine a fair few people looking up guides and thinking, how the hell was I supposed to figure that out? And those action scenes, that's what I call the bits of the game that aren't so much point and clicky as they are fighting sections. You control your bike by moving the mouse, scroll through your available weapons in real time before twatting your opponent with them before they hit you with theirs. There are a couple of these scenes, as well as the aforementioned destruction derby scene, which itself is a bit awkward to see using the mouse. One of these scenes is pretty lengthy and forms one big puzzle, which I personally think would cause the second most amount of hassle for players. You have to fight several different bikers and acquire their weapons, with many of them only being beatable with a certain specific weapon. I can only imagine that a lot of trial and error will go into solving this one, and with your next opponent seemingly random, it could cause a fair bit of bother and annoyance. As for the puzzle that causes the most amount of hassle, even for returning players, well, let's just say you'll feel like you've literally hit a wall at that point. It's notorious, it's unedited, and it's still a royal pain in the ass, even after all this time. And if you're a new player who hasn't been paying attention and really thinking about it, I imagine it could add an hour or so to the total play time, by which point the ambient sound effect would be grating against the front of your skull. This game is also amazingly short. I've heard people say that this game is about 5 or 6 hours long, which I think maybe sounds about right for new players. But me, I cleared it in 2 hours and 23 minutes according to Steve. It took me a little bit longer the next time through because I was stopping to listen to the commentaries. This is a short game, and from the commentaries it sounds like that was due to budget and time constraints, which is a shame I suppose, but it never outstays its welcome. So, would new players enjoy this game? Honestly, if they've got the slightest bit of interest in maybe trying out these sorts of games, I think they just might do. If you're on the fence about point and click adventure games from the times of yore, then I think this is the best entry point. It's a bit more logical, it's cinematic as all hell, and it's not full of magic and fantasy, it's a gritty murder setup. And I spent the entire damn playthrough with a big stupid grin on my face as the nostalgia flooded my senses. This is how you do remasters. You take a properly old game, tart it up so it looks damn near new, stick a few behind the scenes goodies in with it and push it out there for less than the price of a Frankie and Benny's meal. And that kind of sums up my opinion on the apparent flood of remasters released in the last few years. Leave it at least, at least two console generations before remastering a game so that there is a significant and considerable graphical upgrade, so that you can look back at how far graphics have come and how these games have stood the test of time instead of them just being churned out for full price because those consoles you sold aren't backwards compatible so you have to buy it again if you want to keep playing it. Bulletstorm! Although Bulletstorm is a really good game, but the remaster should have at least been half price. Now where's my X-Wing remaster?